Hello everybody and welcome to my channel today. We're going to be doing my favorite video that we do every month. <laughs> it is the new releases for the next month. So we are going to be going over all of the September 2023 releases. As I usually say before these videos starts, I tend to go over young adult books, mystery thriller adult books, some romance, and some horror. I don't really do historical fiction. I don't really do nonfiction. So if you're looking more for that, and I don't do a ton of literary fiction every once in a while I'll throw something in there. So if you're looking more for those types of books, I would suggest going to find another video. But if you're here for fantasy, oh yeah, fantasy, sci-fi, young adult, romance, etc. Everything I said earlier, then this is definitely the video for you. So we are going to jump right into the new releases for September. First up, our first release date is September 5th. And we have a couple here. I feel like this month is kind of weird and that I don't have anything that I'm like super, super, super excited about that I can think of off the top of my head or like multiple books that I'm really excited about. I feel like this is just like under the radar kind of stuff. So I feel like I don't have that much. So this should be quicker, hopefully, than other videos. <laughs> but first we're talking about the new Charlene Harris. I can't really talk about this much. This is more for me, I feel like, than anyone else. This is the Gunny Rose series, All the Dead Shall Weep. This is book five in the series pretty much all that I have to talk about. Haven't even read the first one, but I'm just a huge Charlene Harris fan, so I'm excited that the series is continuing. Next, we have the new Stephen King, which if I was a betting person, I would put money that this would probably make it onto the horror list. This is number three in a series too. I've never heard of this series. I love the cover, but it is Holly by Stephen King. Again, not gonna say too much about it because it does say it's third in the series, but I'm sure a lot of people are really, really excited about this one. I have yet to read a full-length Stephen King novel. I tried to read The Shining and I did not like it. <laughs> My plan is to try to read Misery during September at some point. Like I said, I'm sure a lot of people are excited about this one. Okay, here's the first one that I can actually talk about. We have a romance, The Long Game by Elena Armas. And she is the same author as The Spanish Love Deception, which I gave five stars. I absolutely loved it. So I'm pretty excited about this one. I have not read, what is it, The American Roommate? experiment. I literally have it like on the table over there. I haven't read that one yet. So I got to read that one first before I read this one. But this one says it's about a disgraced soccer exec reluctantly enlists the help of a retired soccer star in coaching a children's team in this small town love story in the vein of Ted Lasso and it happened one summer from the New York Times bestselling author of The Spanish Love Deception. That sounds so fun. That sounds so fun. And I feel like I really like The Spanish Love Deception because it was just a fun book and there was just it was wild a lot of people didn't like it because it was just a little bit over the top but it was just a fun book so I'm really really excited about this one the next one is another romance it's a witchy romance and I actually included this because Meg Cabot is the same author as the Princess Diaries series which was an absolutely huge series that I read when I was younger I was obsessed with them obviously everyone's obsessed with the movies I was obsessed with the movies <laughs> but I also really really like the books and I think I've read two other books by Meg Cabot when I was younger so I'm really curious to read an adult book by her I don't think I've ever read an adult book Book by her. But this says it's a witchy rom-com about a plus-size witch who must team up with a handsome stranger to help protect her village from an otherworldly force, but will she be able to protect her heart? Again, all I need to know about it, that sounds really good. We have plus-size rep, which is really cool, and I tend to enjoy those books, so yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm curious how her writing will switch from children slash young adult to adult. I think she's wrote, written some other adult books though. So I don't, I don't know that much. I just saw her name and I was like, oh, this is interesting. Next up, we have a young adult mystery thriller coming out on September 5th. And it is Suddenly a Murder by Lauren Munoz. And this one is following friends who are going to a 1920s th themed party on an island. This is secluded, etc. And it says, one of us is lying, it meets knives out in a killer locker mystery. So that could be really interesting. I don't know. I feel like I've just been reading so many young adult mysteries that are locked room and they're revolving around like wealthy people. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like that's like the thing this year because I read The Legacies. I read these, what is it? These Deadly Games, something like that. And I feel like this is another one like similar in that vein where it's just rich people and we're supposed to not like them and we're following the one non-rich person and dealing with what they're going through so I don't know I feel like that's such a thing this year 
that I'm kind of getting sick of it already. Next one coming out on September 5th is called The September House. This is an adult horror paranormal mystery thriller. I love when they like tag them all with all these things because I'm like, what is it really? I kind of assume whatever the first tag is, that's like what it really is. So this is tagged as horror first. I have seen this quite a few times recently. It seems like a lot of people are very, very interested in this one. So I'm very curious like exactly what's going on with this. A woman is determined to stay in her dream home even after it becomes a haunted nightmare in this country compulsively, compulsively, readable, twisty, and layered debut novel. I feel like uh, I want this to be like comedy horror. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be, but like when I read that, it makes it sound like this woman is going to be fighting this ghost to like stay in her house. And to me that like screams uh, black comedy, but I don't think that's what it's supposed to be. I think it's gonna be like a dark horror, but I want it to be, I want it to be funny. Ah, uh, the next one is one that I actually am reading for my ARC video, or actually have already DNF'd it <laughs> for my ARC video. This is The Library of Shadows. This is a fantasy romance young adult book by Rachel Moore. And I am just not a fan. I was not a fan of this book. I DNF'd it like 25, 30% in. And it was just very cringy and uh, yeah, I was not a fan of this one. But this was following our main character who gets into a boarding school that her father went to and she has a key to this like attic place and there's a book that goes missing because she helps this boy in there but the boy turns out to be a ghost. None of that is like a surprise. That happens all within the first like 10 pages <laughs> and it's in the like synopsis, whatever. But it's just cringy. This book was so cringy. I talk about it more in that arc video, which hopefully will be coming out at some point. <laughs> I don't know. The arc video is not going very well. I'm DNFing a lot of stuff. So yeah, I don't know about that. But yeah, I this one's interesting. I'm really excited to see what other people think the more people read it because this seems like something that would be right up my alley being young adult fantasy paranormal kind of thing going on. So cringy. So cringy. So I'm excited to see what other people say. Last one that I have coming out on September 5th is There's No Way I Die First. I love anything that has to do with horror movie related things. This is a young adult horror thriller and it says it's a contemporary horror that follows a scary movie buff as she hosts an elaborate halloween bash on her family's estate but soon finds the festivities upended when she and her guests are forced to test their survival skills in a deadly party game sounds like your generic fantastic teen slasher kind of thing going on Love it. I'm so excited to read this one. All right, so our next release date is September 12th. We have Peach Pit, 16 Stories of Unsavory Women. I don't know about this one. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of short story collections I have found, but at the same time, this sounds kind of fun. It says a stunning anthology of fierce and dangerous women featuring stories from Lauren Groff, Disha Philia, K Ming Chang and 13 other award-winning and best-selling authors. It's basically just a story about strong women, it seems. In these 16 stories, we see women at their most monstrous, as carn artists and murderers, cutthroats and scalpers, ruled by ambition and grief and spite, etc. So I think that's very different than other short story collections and anthologies that I've read. So I'm very curious how this one's going to come across. Next, we have The Graveyard Shift by Maria Lewis and another horror. I feel like I had a lot of horror this month. And it says, when a horror-loving radio show becomes the stage of a gruesome murder, its host Tinsel Monroe is put next on the killer's list. Sounds fun. <laughs> That sounds like something I definitely like. It sounds like a movie. Any horror book that sounds like it could be a really interesting slasher movie is something that I want to try to read because I love slasher movies. I just, I'm trying to find my niche in horror because I feel like I'm having a really hard time finding horror books that I absolutely love. So I'm just, I'm struggling. I'm struggling and I really don't want to be struggling. <laughs> well, I'm just like trying a bunch of different ones <laughs> and this will be on my list to try. Next coming out on September 12th is The Collector. Again, another adult horror book. A frightening dystopian horror novel where grief is forbidden and purged from the mind. A nightmarish mix of 1984 and Never Let Me Go. The Bureau has your best interests in mind. This is like sci-fi horror. Very interesting. This reminds me of 
poster girl a little bit, like post dystopian kind of thing going on, like after the war is already done, where you're post war, you're in this like different type of time zone and poster girl just like had people watching them and stuff like that. So this sounds very interesting. I'm curious about the horror aspect of it. So this sounds like a very interesting one and very different. So definitely one that I want to try. We have another horror, What Kind of Mother. This one, a little, I'm a little iffy on because I don't like stories about moms. <laughs> I just, it freaks me out. So I just don't tend to like them. So I just avoid them. But it sounds so weird and I don't know. Paul Tremblay did a little blurb for it and it says mixes southern gothic, a missing child story, and body horror into an entertaining brew sure to inform your nightmares. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We have a teen mom who is striking out on her own and ends up being forced to return to her hometown in Virginia with her 17 year old daughter once she's older and other things are happening, supernatural things. So I don't know. This one, I don't know. <laughs> We're going to see about this one. Uh, the next one is one that people are very excited about. I have not read a Rachel Harrison, but this seems like one I may want to start with. This is Black Sheep. And it says, a cynical 20-something must confront her unconventional family's dark secrets in this fiery, irreverent horror novel from the author of Such Sharp Teeth and Cackle. I do really want to read Cackle. Cackle sounds like a book that I actually really like. I just haven't gotten to it. And that one seems less horror, more like maybe cozy horror. I don't know. It's just witchy vibes. And for some reason, if it's not like dark, dark, dark witches, I don't think of horror when it comes to witches, which is weird, right? I don't know. It's, it's a weird thing. It says, when Vesper's homecoming exhumes a terrifying secret, she's forced to reckon with her family's beliefs and her own crisis of faith in this deliciously sinister novel that explores the way family ties can bind us as we struggle to find our place in the world. So this is definitely going to be like family drama, family horror, which is also very popular lately. Do I seriously only have horror this month? <laughs> like, what is happening? I guess it's September, which is right before Halloween. So a lot of authors are putting their books out September so people can get them and then read them for the Halloween season. This is Hemlock Island by Kelly Armstrong. This is a horror mystery thriller adult book. And I love this cover. There's something so creepy and eerie about this cover. I'm literally obsessed with it. And it says our main character has been renting her vacation home to strangers. The invasion of privacy gives her panic attacks, but it's the only way she can keep her beloved Hemlock Island, the only thing she owns after a pandemic fueled divorce. But broken belongings and campfires that nearly burned down the house have escalated to bloody bones, hex circles, and now terrified renters who fled after finding blood and nail marks all over the guest room closet. <laughs> Yeah, I'm definitely gonna read this one. This one sounds really good. <laughs> sounds really, really good. Next, we are finally off horror. We are on contemporary romance fiction. Again, don't know how I feel about this. The Second Chance Hotel. And it says it's all fun and games until you accidentally marry a stranger in Greece and inherit a hotel. Again, all I want to know about it. That sounds really like a really fun premise that can go a lot of different directions. Ah, uh, here is a fantasy romance that is coming out. Can't really talk about it. It is the second in a series chasm it is the second after ledge and this is the what is it the tiktok author who does the hilarious tiktoks about uh her husband turning her husband into a fantasy romance character it's so funny and it, the first book was actually really good for like a tiktok author because i know it's like a thing for booktube tiktok author whatever actually pretty decent so i'm excited to see where the second one goes and i think the first one had a lot of promise i think i gave it like a three and a half and uh it had a lot of promise where the second book could go. So I'm very excited about it. I do have an arc of this, so I will be getting to it early. And I'm pretty excited about it. Next one is one that a lot of people are excited about. And I've already seen some interesting reviews about it. <laughs> this is Rouge by Mona Awad. Same author as Bunny. I was not a fan of Bunny. I tried reading it and I didn't like it. So this is not one that I'll probably pick up. But I know a lot of people are really excited about this one. Like I said, I feel like September wasn't a month that I'm super excited about anything. I feel like there's people who are excited about things, but nothing really for me. This is a horror-tinted gothic fairy tale about a lonely dress sh shop clerk whose mother's unexpected death sends her down a treacherous path in pursuit of youth and beauty. Can she escape her mother's fate and find a connection that is more than skin deep? It sounds kind of interesting, so I don't know. I feel like I'm probably going to wait till I see more about it, but as of right now, 
not like super high interest level for me. Okay, this is one that I'm again a little suspicious about but I really really like the premise. This is the same author as The Chicken Sisters which I really did not like. So a little nervous but this one sounds way more up my alley. Gilmore Girls meets Practical Magic. In the latest novel from the New York Times bestselling author of The Chicken Sisters, the story of one woman's Halloween homecoming to the town where she swore off magic and where she must reclaim it in order to create the life she desires and protect everyone she loves from an unexpected threat. So witchy things I just tend to like a lot. So I'm probably going to give this author another shot and just see if it was the premise of the first one that I didn't like because I didn't think the writing was bad. I just, I, I, it was different than what I was expecting. And I think that was not the fault of the author, but I feel like it was the reviews. Like there were some celebrity reviews done by it that were like, this is hilarious. It's so funny. And I did not laugh a single time while reading that book. So I was expecting this like contemporary fiction comedy almost. And that was not what the book was. So this, I'm just going to stay away from reviews and try reading it without any other expectation. Our back to horror. This is monstrous, but this time it's a young adult horror. Forced to spend her summer in her aunt's strange small town, a teen girl discovers dark secrets hidden in the woods. From the author of Bad Witch Burning comes another pulse pounding novel, perfect for fans of supernatural and loved craft country. Don't go outside past dark, come straight home after church, and above all, never ever go into the red wood. Sounds interesting. I feel like this is a very straightforward horror young adult book, but I'm excited if there's like any twists or anything in it. Another young adult horror. I hate this cover, but I love the idea of this one. Your Lonely Nights Are Over. Scream meets Clueless in this young adult horror from Adam Sass, in which two gay teen BFFs find their friendship tested when a serial killer starts targeting their school's queer club. So I think it sounds really good. I love Scream meets Clueless. Very interesting. I don't want to know too much more about it, but I am curious, again, if this is going to have some sort of twist or it's just going to fall along the lines of other books kind of similar to it. That's kind of my problem I feel like I've been having lately where the young adult mystery thrillers that I've been reading and horror books that I've been reading are just so similar that I'm starting to get confused about what book is what. So I hope this one's different than the other ones I've read. So speaking of different, this one looks like a weird one. This is called What Stalks Among Us, a deliriously creepy young adult speculative thriller about two best friends trapped in a corn maze with corpses that look just like them. Yeah, that's all I'm going to know about that one. That's all I want to know about that one because that one sounds weird. That's going to be a weird one. That could be really good. It could be absolutely terrible, but it sounds weird and different and I kind of want weird and different. We have a science fiction book next. I don't do a lot of science fiction because I don't read that much science fiction, but when I find a science fiction that sounds interesting, I latch onto it. And this is one that I've latched onto a little bit. The Death I Gave Him, a lyrical queer sci-fi retelling of Shakespeare's Hamlet as a locked room thriller. <laughs> don't know what that means. And I don't know where the sci science fiction is gonna come in. Hayden Litchfield's life is ripped apart when he finds his father murdered in their lab and the camera logs erase. The killer can only have been after one thing. The Sisyphus formula the two of them develop together, which might one day reverse death itself. Yeah, sounds weird. Sounds, sounds weird. I feel like all science fiction's gotta be a little weird. The Borrow a Boyfriend Club. This is one that I recently finished for the ARC video. I give it a four stars. This one is so cute. It is so cute, but it also does something that I really liked because this is following a main character who is trans and had to change schools because of bullying and terrible things that he was having to deal with and people were refusing to use his name and it was just terrible. It was terrible. So he transferred schools to this rich school where obviously he decides that he wants to not go through what he went through in his last school and he decides he has to prove that he's this manly man person because that's what he was being made fun of for before, which is so frustrating it's so frustrating you're basically following the perspective of this trans teen dealing with all of that and he decides that he wants to join the borrow a boyfriend club which is all the popular boys basically as a part of and he has to like prove himself and there's fake dating going on coming of age stuff and it's adorable and also like it's hard to read at times because it puts you in the mindset of a teenager so well that is dealing with the stress of everything that I was literally was stressing out. <laughs> I was stressing out while reading this, but also it was so cute and I loved it. So take what you will from that. I just think it was really good to read like so in depth from that perspective because I feel like I don't get that that much. 
I feel like a lot of rom-com books that I read, the trans character is a side character and they're already kind of established in their friend group. We're literally following a trans character who has no friends, has no support. So, well, his parents are kind of supportive. It's though that's a difficult subject they talk about in the book. But it's it's you are establishing all this at the same like with him. So it is it's a lot. It's very emotional. But at the same time, it's like a feel-good coming of age rom-com. So yeah, it was, I liked it a lot and I definitely think other people should read it. And then our next one comes out on September 14th, but I believe this is the UK release date. Again, release dates are kind of subjective to things like what country you're in, etc. So this is September 14th. I'll need to double check like exactly when it's coming out, but I'm so excited for this one. This is the second book in the Mindwalker series. I read the first one. I really liked it. I think it had a four, four and a half stars. This one is following a uh, different characters from that same world though so I still can't say that much about it really really fun science fiction book definitely excited to continue reading it because it's like dystopian science fiction which is my favorite we are moving on it to September 19th we have the first book by Kendar Blake I actually have not read a book by this author I, it's which is weird because they're a very I feel like prolific young adult fantasy writer so it's surprising that I haven't read anything by this author but the next one coming out by her is Champion of Fate and it's going to be the first in a series called Hero Maker. And it says, behind every great hero is an Aristine. Aristine are mythical female warriors, part of a legendary order. Though heroes might be immortalized in stories, it's the Aristine who guide them to victory. They are the hero makers. I think that sounds so cool. So I'm very excited for that one. Next one is an adult mystery thriller. I'm surprised I haven't had more. Like, I feel like I've had none. And I definitely have seen this one places. Like, I've definitely seen people bring this one up. A shocking thriller about a cold case, a fictional true crime series, and the family caught in the middle. Six episodes, one killer. Again, all I want to know, podcast, episodes. I'm just, I'm so excited. Anything podcast, I want to read it, okay? You guys know this by now. It's it's one of my weaknesses, <laughs> this podcast. And I like the cold case idea. I feel like it's been a while since I read a mystery thriller that deals with a cold case. I'm very excited about that. Okay, we have John Scalzi's next book. This could either be great or terrible. <laughs> Starter villain by John Scalzi. I'm excited. My husband likes John Scalzi too. We're actually currently reading Red Shirts by him. I've read Kaiju Preservation Society. My husband's read Red Shirts and a couple other ones by him and he really likes him. But it's just, it's, they're so weird. Another unique sci-fi caper set in the strangest of all worlds, present day Earth. <laughs> Inheriting your mysterious uncle's supervillain business is more complicated than you might imagine. And there's language using computer savvy cats and their management. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I cannot tell you what I even remotely think about this, but probably going to read it. The next is a, I actually thought this was young adult. This is an adult sports romance called Cleet cute, which is adorable. A sapphic rivals to lovers rom-com for fans of Ted Lasso and a league of their own where two soccer teammates are at odds before falling in love as their team gears up for the World Cup. Love it. Love the idea behind this. I love how everything related to soccer now is immediately Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, which I love Ted Lasso, so I can't really blame him and it definitely like drew me a little bit to it, but I just, I love how they like grip onto certain things. It used to be like Stranger Things for everything horror. Now it's like Ted Lasso for everything soccer. <laughs> so the next one I'm pretty excited about. I really liked this author's last duology. This is The Forest Grim by Catherine Purdy. Not a big fan of the cover. I don't know. The artwork's a little bit funky to me. She's fine. The guy looks kind of funky. Where fairy tales come to life with dark deadly twists. Tell me again the story of how I die. Yeah, like it. It's, gr I mean, if it's anything having to do with the Brothers Grimm or just Grimm fairy tales, I tend to really like that. And again, really, really like their last duology. So I am pretty excited about it. And the one that everybody is excited about. This is probably going to be uh, a last chance author one for me, but this is coming in every book box known to man. I feel like A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I have not liked the last two books that Ava Reed has put out. I DNF Juniper and Thorn, and I really hated the end of what The Wolf and the Woodsman, something like that. I read that for the Illumicrate blog. So yeah, I'm really nervous about this one, but it's it I don't know. I don't know. It just depends. And this one seems more like stuff I would like, but The Wolf and the Woodsman was something I should have liked. So I don't know. I'm very torn about how I feel about this. Effie Sayer has always believed in fairy tales. She had no choice. 
Since childhood, she's been haunted by visions of the Fairy King. She's found solace only in the pages of Angharad, author Emrys Meriden's beloved epic about a mortal girl who falls in love with the Fairy King and then destroys him. And then it just continues on. It's got like dark academia feels. I'm really curious. I'm really hoping I like it. I'm really, really hoping that I like it because I'm getting so many copies of it. <laughs> okay, we are on to our last two dates technically. September 26th is the big one and then I have one that's coming out on September 27th, but basically just lumping it in with the 26th. So the first one we have is The Grimmer. It is a young adult horror. I will be reading this for my ARC video again, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Hey, like I said, small town mystery are made modern with a dash of Stranger Things. <laughs> I told you, anytime small town horror young adult, it's like Stranger Things. This is our main character. There's been like an incident in his family and he is then attacked by an unsettling pale man who seems to be decaying, pulled into the world of the occult, etc. I just think it sounds fun. It sounds like a fun young adult horror book. Seriously, this should have just been new horror releases. <laughs> knock Knock Open Why, this is an adult horror book as well, weaves horror and Celtic myth into a terrifying, heartbreaking, supernatural tale of fractured family bonds, the secrets we carry, and the veiled forces that guide Irish life. I forgot. This one was one that I was like, I don't know about because a lot of family drama, a lot of emotional things are not like my cup of tea. So this is going to be one that I'm going to have to see about. This is another one that I've been seeing a lot. This is a horror thriller mystery. I've been, I've seen it tagged more as like thriller mystery, The Stranger Upstairs. A social media influencer with a secret past buys a murder house to renovate, but finds more than she bargained for behind the peeling wallpaper in this gothic psychological debut. Love it. Love the cover. Very excited about this one. Getting Amityville horror vibes from it. So very excited. Okay, this would be one that I was really excited for, but I haven't read the first book yet. Cage of Dreams. It is the second book in the City of Nightmares series by Rebecca Schaefer. Can't really say anything other than it's just the second book. This one, again, I would say I'm really excited about. I do have an arc of this, so I will be reading this early, but this is the new Shelby Mahurin who wrote the Serpent and Dove series. I still haven't finished it. And I didn't realize that this takes place in the world. And it's about a, what is it? A dark and thrilling vampire romance set in the world of Serpent and Dove. So now I'm like, do I need to finish Serpent and Dove first? Cause I'm stuck on blood and blood and blood and honey. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with that. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that one. <laughs> We're just, we're just gonna have to see when I get to that one, but oh man. So I'm not like super excited about this one because of how hard that series fell off for me. Another one that I would say I'm excited about, but I haven't read the first one, is the second book in the Foul Lady Fortune series, Foul Heart Huntsman. They're getting harder to say. <laughs> the more books she puts out, the harder they are to say. So can't say I'm super excited. Again, can't say much about it because I don't even want to see much about it because it's the second book. So I'm just going to click off of that, but that comes out this month. This Dark Descent. This one sounds really good by Kaylin Josephson. The Shadows Between Us meets Six of Crows. I loved Shadows Between Us and Six of Crows. So I'm like... That's a lot to love up for, for me. Well, binding new fantasy full of intrigue, romance, and pulse pounding action, where the eldest daughter of a renowned family on the verge of ruin joins forces with a mysterious rogue enchanter and a handsome, ambitious heir to win a deadly race. Competition. I'm a little nervous, little, little nervous about love triangle things happening in this one, but I'm still really excited. Okay, again, I'm not like foaming at the mouth to read this one, but I know a lot of people are. The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab. I have yet to read V.E. Schwab book. So I can't, so I'm just like, I have the full, what is it? A Darker Shade of Magic series to read. I'm sure I'm gonna love it, but I just, I haven't had time to read it. Uh, so I definitely need to do that. I feel like I need to put that whole series on my Wheel of No Appeal uh, on like a green spot. So I oh, that would be actually be a really good idea. But anyway, I know a lot of people are really excited. Oh, See, I have read one, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, but it's totally different than all her other books, so I don't, like, count it as part of this. This is set in the Darker Shade of Magic world, so I'm definitely not going to get to this until I finish, start and finish A <laughs> Darker Shade of Magic. And our last one that we have, which will be in the ARC video if it ever comes out, September 27th, we have The Ski Trip coming out. This one doesn't have great reviews already, but at the same time, it's only 25 ratings, so I can't, like, say much about that. It's, like, my favorite thing. Terrible accident, in the Alps, on a skiing holiday. Yeah, it's locked room-esque kind of things going on in in ice places. 
I love how he shows up at the very end. Yeah, so that's all I know about it. That's all I know about it. I'm hoping it's it's very locked roomy and people are stuck in a cabin somewhere. That's what it seems like. So kind of a lot to say about it. Anyway, but anyway, that was everything for September. Like I said, I feel like this is not a very exciting month. I feel like there's definitely some things coming out that are pretty cool, but nothing that I'm just like, oh my gosh, I will die if I don't get it now. So kind of sad about that. Kind of good because my bank account is really going to like this month, I, I hope. I hope. I know there's some special editions and stuff that are releasing this month that I probably do have to buy, which is less exciting. But overall, very excited still. So that is everything that I have for you for September. Let me know down in the comments down below what you guys are excited about if I missed anything. And there's always stuff that I miss. So let me know if I missed anything and what you're excited about. If you've read some already, what you think about them. No spoilers, but kind of what you think about them. If I should read them, if you think I'd like them. Make sure as always to like the video if you enjoyed it and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future content, including future book release things videos that come out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.